Hello and welcome to the World Bank Group's Open Learning Campus course on Discovering Needs. In the course, we'll provide an introduction to needs assessments and how they can be used to guide decisions in organizations. Throughout the course, we'll illustrate needs assessments as it's applied to learning design or training design, though the concepts, methods, and tools will be applicable to many other fields as well. I'm Ryan Watkins, and I'm a professor at George Washington University in Washington, DC, where I teach and do research on needs assessment and learning design. In the course, we will have three video lectures. In each lecture, there will also be self-reflection opportunities where I ask you to pause the lecture and think about how we can apply needs assessment in your organization. In addition to the three lectures, we've also developed case exercises to help you apply needs assessment in your own work. There are also quizzes to ensure that you have gained key lessons, and there are resources that you can refer to after the course is over. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. And a great place to start when you think about needs assessment is why are we doing it in the first place? And typically, we do a needs assessment when we want to bring about change in our organization, in our community, in our ministry, or in our country. And change usually happens by starting with individuals. And then those individuals talk with other individuals, and the concepts and ideas grow. And eventually, we can reach systemic level change through large groups having the knowledge, skills, and motivation to make changes within our institutions. There are also some common barriers that we find to building the capacity to make change. These typically come in three different areas within institutions. Is there an environment for change? Is there organizational backing for the change? And do policies support the change as we move forward? We'll take a quick look at these before we get into how needs assessments have a role in moving change forward. As we think about environments for change within our institutions, we want to consider issues of the values, the leaders, the stakeholders, who has voice within the system, what are the incentives and what are the norms. These will guide us to areas that typically provide barriers to change within our institutions. As we think about policy supports for change, we want to consider regulations, administrative capacity, technical capacity for change, the adequacy of the changes and the policies, and are we adequately acknowledging risk as policy changes have inherent risk with them. Lastly, we can look at the institutional backing. Are there systems for monitoring and evaluating change as we go forward? Do we have business plans? Is there a leadership model in place? And is there budget and human capital to support the change as we go forward? As we start to think about these different potential barriers for change, we can then start to see where people play a role as change agents. As change agents, people can do several things to help make change happen within institutions. They can have convening power, bringing groups together. They can take on leadership roles. They can take action, sometimes as individuals or within groups. And of course, they can have influence over others. So when we want change and we want to have change agents within institutions to help bring about that change, we must empower them. And this is often where learning design starts to come into the picture. Through learning, we can empower change agents. We can raise their awareness of key issues. We can facilitate consensus and teamwork. We can assist in the formulation of policy or strategy. We can even help build implementation know-how through pilot projects. We can enhance skills, and of course, we can foster networks of change agents. All of these can help empower the change agents to bring about the change and overcome those barriers and slowly bring about the types of change that we're looking for in our institutions. 
So when we're developing learning, we often think of these learning outcomes in relation to what will empower the change agents. And this will give us a framework for building learning programs that can support change as we move forward. There are several drivers that commonly lead to the design of learning within this context. Sometimes it's driven by supply, where we have knowledge or expertise within our institutions and we plan to share that in some way. It can also be demand driven, where a client, either internal or external to our organization, requests a specific learning on a topic or a set of skills so that they can start to move change forward. And often it is needs driven. And this is where needs assessment fits into the picture. What is it that we have needs for and how can we best work to accomplish those results? So today we're gonna to focus on needs assessment and how it can fit into this framework. Because somewhere in the middle between supply, demand and needs is where valuable results take place. When all three of these merge together, we have the knowledge through the supply, we have demand and motivation from the clients, and there is truly the need, then we can gain valuable results. Often, it's easy to look at the supply. We know about the expertise that resides within our organization, and often clients will tell us what the demand is They'll request a training program. They'll put out a call for proposals. But needs can be a little more confusing. It's not always clear what is a need, what is a want. And so what we want to do is use needs assessment to help clarify this part of the equation. Before we go forward, please go ahead and pause the video and we'll take time for a short self-reflection exercise. I'll ask you to identify a current learning program in your organization and write down at least three drivers that led to the development of the learning program. And then when you're done, ask yourself three basic questions. Was there clear demand for the learning? Was the learning supply driven? Or was there a clear need that drove the development of the learning? So go ahead and pause the video now and complete the self-reflection activity. When you're done, you can restart the video.